we're going to set up a sandbox with a local workload with the Signa.cli. This will let us run a sandbox where one of the services in this application is running on my laptop. All the other components are running on a shared cluster and critically as I experiment and break this one service, all the other components are still running the baseline version so every other developer who relies on the shared cluster will be able to send in requests as normal. The baseline version of the service I'm experimenting with is still here and still served to everybody else uh, who is not using my special routing. Okay, first let's connect our local machine with our Kubernetes cluster. To connect our machine to our cluster, we'll use signal.local connect. And this lasts for our password because it's editing our etc host file. And we can see the status here. It says, hey, this is working. And we can see our status. It'll show us that all the services that are discoverable on that cluster are now available to be accessed from local DNS lookup. And you can see in the docs how it constructs these service names, but I'm able to come on over here and access and hit the front end service of my application. So right now we're not running a sandbox. And so this is just the baseline version of our shared cluster that is running this application. This is a demo app, a ride sharing app where we can set a particular destination and get back a user and an ETA uh, from the routing service. Let's take a look at the architecture of this demo app. So this demo app has multiple services to be able to return these responses. We've got a front end and we've got two services that rely on MySQL and Redis and we've got this routing service over here. So what we wanna do is we wanna fork just this routing service and we wanna to continue to rely on the shared cluster versions of all of these other services. Let's create our sandbox. So we're going to use Signanot Sandbox Apply, and we're going to point it at localroute.yaml. Let's take a look at that config file up here. So we're going to give it a name, and we're going to point it to a particular cluster. This is the cluster name we got from connecting our cluster to the Signanot control plane. And we're going to point it at a particular deployment by name. And then we're gonna do some mapping here to say which port on my local machine do we expect to find my fork of this service. And then down here at the bottom, we have this endpoints list, and this is an optional setting for convenience. This will let you share a view of your sandbox to other people on your team without having to do any kind of special configuration. Okay, we're not afraid of special configuration, so after we apply this, we'll get back a routing key, which we're gonna use in a little bit to see our sandbox. Um, and then here's that convenience URL. Okay, let's take a look at our app. So now on our app, we're still, when we send it a request, we're still just getting the stock version. But if we add this header that we copied, we will now be getting the sandbox version. And right now this will probably actually fail because we're not running our local service. Let's go ahead and start up our local service. We'll and run a go command to run this code, allow at. And now, when we send a request in, we get back a response. And I haven't broken this code yet, so you can see here that it's actually hitting the service and just getting back the expected response. Okay, let's break this code. So we'll go into this go code and we're gonna have stuff arrive a little bit ahead of schedule. We're going to go ahead and multiply the ETA time by negative one, start having stuff arrive in negative time. So I could use a watcher here, right, to update this, uh, to restart the service every time we change the code, but I didn't do that this time, so let's just go ahead and restart it. And now we have our header set, and when we send a request, it will now route and hit our broken version of the service. Now, that's kind of cool that we didn't even have to reload um, the shared front end version or anything to go ahead and get in and start seeing the broken version of the service. And sure enough, it's always gonna return. You can see it getting hit down here. It's always gonna return this negative time. So now that we've done this, is this service broken for everybody else who's using our cluster? And they're gonna start getting negative times and start hitting us up on Slack and said, hey, does somebody mess with the routing service? No, they're not, because if we turn off this header um, and so we're no longer hitting our sandbox in our request, now we're just gonna see the baseline version of all the services, including the routing service, and get the time back that we expect. 
and you can see down here that this service is no longer being hit. Okay, so let's activate that header again and let's fix our service. So we'll go in, all right, it was maybe not too great to start traveling in time. So we'll save that and restart our service one more time. And now we are hitting the sandbox version, which we can see, we can see it getting some activity, but we're starting to get back these reasonable times. So now we feel like this is fixed and we're good to go, but maybe we want to share this sandbox version to have sign off from another team, like the front end team or something else. And we don't want them to do this um, special request header thing uh, to do this routing. So for that, we have this convenience URL that we got earlier and you can distribute this URL to other people on your team. They can use it and then they will get this service. All the other uh, components will be the baseline, but then our service will be sandboxed. That LC, the output from the sandbox, and they can let you know that it looks good. If you want to dive further into how we're doing this kind of smart routing, uh, do take a look at our docs. Thank you so much for checking this out, and uh, hope it was helpful.